and nobody could tell me why the software was configured the way it was other than that I found out that there was a gentleman sitting in a shed in the warehouse taking printouts off this integrated big brand ERP system and manually rekeying them into the same system nobody knew why and nobody could tell me how to stop it the net result was they scrapped the system and went back to their old system the bottom line is when the problems with your ERP cause you to lose customers your ERP has just become more expensive than you can afford. If we look at the factors for success, I did the same exercise. I've looked at some successful systems, I've had some successful implementations myself and I asked the question, what is it that characterizes successful outcomes. Well the first one is executive custody. The chief executive is personally involved. This is my system. You will make it work. They're not interested in excuses. They want the job done and they want it to work and they will apply the necessary resources. There's accountability. People know that they will be called to account if the project fails. Then effective change facilitation and this is an area that I've seen become a bigger issue in the last decade. Most organizations today have some form of system which would loosely at least fall under the heading of ERP where ERP is just a term for an integrated business information system. So you may have a homegrown system People don't like change, particularly when the change is not well executed, not well thought out, and it involves them working overtime and scrapping things that they had that were working well. So the managing the psychology of change is a big issue. And then strategic architecture, strategic alignment, all the things around strategy, absolutely vital. If you do not understand the essence of the business and how it thrives, you cannot implement effectively. I did an investigation a few years ago. I asked the lead consultant, what's the essence of this business and how does it thrive? And he looked at me and he said, that's an unfair question. And I didn't have to look any further to understand why that implementation was failing. <coughs> Then data engineering and configuration, I've spoken at some length about absolutely vital, probably the biggest opportunity that you face today is to potentially reconfigure, re-implement your software if you're not getting the management information you need. And then the engineering approach, designing against failure, precision. Engineers design down to the last nut and bolt, they specify down to the last nut and bolt, do you do that? with your IT? Do you specify it and make absolutely sure it will work? Or do you put sloppy things in and wonder why there are sloppy business consequences? Then business integration training processes, computer-based training. Notice that I put processes as an output. The macro headline processes are an input but the detailed specific like specification of process rides on the outcome of the system implementation and then technology and frankly today technology is scarcely an issue as far as success is concerned because most of the systems out there work and you should not be getting obsessed with technology you need to focus on these other things <coughs> Dr. Fritz Holscher an associate of mine describes the relationship between technology and people as follows Technology he includes methods, strategic objectives, the hard tangible stuff. People, information, consultation, po participation, all the way through to commitment, ownership, empowerment. He makes the point that if people concentrate only on the people side, things can be very frustrating. And you may have done projects like that where people overstress the people side. Or on the technology side, then the project becomes high risk. You need to manage both sides. You need to have project management which looks at both issues. 
And then a laboratory. Before you go live, you should test in a laboratory. And here are some photographs out of my, of my laboratory equipment when I was doing my PhD. <clears throat> it's crude, it's rough, but it simulates the real world. A laboratory for an ERP implementation is a room with some computers in which simulates the real world and makes sure that everything is working right, that the configuration is right before you go live. <clears throat> and then leadership. I've said executive custody is critical and 50% of executive custody is a leadership first and foremost by the chief executive officer. Also suggest that you possibly change your business, your IT department and rename it business systems or something like that. Take the emphasis off technology, put it on the business. Case study on data engineering, white paper that I wrote together with the client implemented applying the principles we've talked about there was a dramatic increase in management information huge increase a reduction in headcount not through getting rid of people just because a few people left and weren't replaced there was a dramatic reduction in the audit time and cost and the balance sheet was signed off without qualifications for the first time in 15 years in terms of rem remediating failed ERP projects there are a number of things that you should do. A critical examination, you need to plan the project taking account of all the factors for success. You need to have precision data engineering, taxonomies, configuration. If these are not in place then you need to design new taxonomies and create mappings from the old to the new and then you must either map outside the system or you re-implement and I definitely favor re-implementation but within a properly designed project. The characteristics of a successful team they design against failure, it's top of mind, they apply the factors for success and the other factors described in my book strategy is the foundation on which they build the solution change facilitation and other soft issue services are vital and they recognize them and they see the value of them they apply precision data engineering the people are selected to apply critical issues methods and disciplines, there's engineering rigor and the standards etc are effective and applied in practice. If we look at strategic alignment, the essence of why the business exists and how it thrives, you need, you model the business in the configuration of your ERP from a precise real world strategic perspective and you will help your organization to achieve greater things. So to sum up, precision in the implementation of your ERP is vital. Model the real world in a practical way. ERP is not magic, do not abdicate your intellect. Design against failure. You do understand ERP, it's not magic slow it down to a realistic pace for your business and then align ERP with the essence of your business, the strategy. There's a great opportunity there and I encourage you to seize it. It's been said that if somebody attends a conference and hears something valuable and does not act within 48 hours they probably never will. So I would like to ask you what is the single most important insight you have gained from this presentation and what is the single most practical action that you could execute as soon as you get back to your office. I encourage you to write those down now and act as soon as you can. Possibly during the next break call your office and arrange a meeting send them an email this evening or first thing in the morning, set up something to get going with what you've got out of this presentation. And finally, design your ERP solutions like bridges to last and not fall down. <laughs>